Christian. Yes, I encourage you now to read parts of the exam that we're going to write on Nico. This is practical. So this is the first practical we're going to see. It's a practical on that Nico small. So I'm going to list out um, the apparatus or equipment that we need for this practical. First, we have here the return stand. We have balls to plan. We have stopwatch. We have 15 gram mass hanger, which is this. We have 420 gram slotted masses. We have the spiral spring, which is this. We have the paper tape used to hold the, the metal roof firmly on the red hot stand. We have the metal roof. Then we have the pointer. The pointer is used to note the, 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 the notation in the metal roof. So I'm going to start. For this practical, I will be using. Um, the first question of 1995, which is about Cook's Law. So, I have my table of values here. So, I'm going to perform the practical so that we see it with our very own eyes. So, in Cook's Law, generally, Cook's Law is talking about the force and the extension. According to Hooke's law, it says that the force is directly proportional to extension provided the elastic limit of the material is not exceeded. So, we are going to see the effect of a load on a spiral spring. So, the first thing we will do is we will note the, the pointer at where, um, at, at where there is no mass hanger on the metal rod. So I'm going to remove the mass hanger and record the initial position of the pointer. So from here, the initial position of the pointer, as I'm reading here, the initial position of the pointer is 50.0 centimeters. So I will record that, 50.07 cm. Then, on attaching a mass hanger of 50 grams, let's see how the extension Will take place. So I introduce a mass hanger of 50 gram to the spiral spring, and you find out that the, uh, the spring extends to some certain length. So I'm going to record the, the value for the pointer on the meter rule. So checking it, we'll see that the, the second value, that is where the mass hanger is attached will have the meter rule, the, the extension will move to 51.150. So for us to now get the extension that is produced, we are going to subtract where a mass of 50 gram was hanged from the initial position of the pointer. And when we subtract, we'll have 51.50 minus 50.70, we are having 0.80. So we we'll record it here, 0 0.80. Then we we'll proceed, we we'll add, this is 20 gram slotted masses. We are going to add 20 gram slotted mass to the mass hanger and also read the extension produced as a result of that. So let's see what will happen. Introducing the 20 gram slotted mass, you will find out also that it has ext extended a bit, so we are going to record the point at which the extension has occurred. So from my from my view here, the second position of the pointer is at 52.40. So we will still do the same thing. We will still subtract from the initial position of the pointer, and we are getting the extension to be 1.70. You will continue like that. Add an additional 20 grams to it again to give us 90 grams. You add 20 grams to, to give us one ten, and also 20 grams to give us one thirty. Record the extensions and also record the extensions of uh, the, the load from the pointer. So we have tabulated our, we have gotten our tables. So the next thing that was asked there is that we should plot a graph of extension on the vertical axis against the mass. So extension will be plotted against mass. Make sure you're plotting your graph that you choose an appropriate scale so that you, your, your graphs will align properly. So after plotting the graph, you are also expected to find the intercept of the graph on the y-axis, that is on the vertical axis. So after plotting your graph, you would 
gets a certain value for your slope, which might be used to solve other calculations. But for this process, we are not going to determine the slope. The slope is left for you to determine based on the values that we got in the table. Another question I want us to treat is, they say we should find the difference in extension x from 100 gram to 130 gram. So, if we watch from our table here, there is no 100 gram based on what we have measured, but we have 130 gram. As 130 gram, we are recording the extension to be 4.40, but there is no 100 gram here. But we know, therefore, that, that there will definitely be an extension as that 100 gram. So, from Hooke's law, Hooke's law states that force is directly proportional to extension. So, the constant of proportionality k is equal to what e over f. So, the first extension over the first mass is equal to the second extension over the second mass, which is equal to a constant. So, therefore, we we'll record the extension at 4.40, that's at 130 gram, which is 4.40. So we say 4.40 over 130 multiplied by the, sec the extension, which we don't know, all over the mass of 100 gram. Solving, we will have that the extension is 3.38 centimeters. So the difference in extension they are trying to tell us is the difference in extension from 130 gram to 100 gram. The, the extension at 130 grams is 4.40 minus by the, the extension you get, 3.3 is, we'll have that the extension is 1.02 centimeters, which will convert to meters by dividing by 100, giving us a value of 0 0.0102 meters. This is the difference in extension when the string is extended from 100 grams to 130 grams. Alright, another thing that they say we should calculate is let's see what will happen when this string is set to a vertical oscillation at a period or at, at, at an oscillation of 10, uh, at 10 oscillations. So let's see what will happen. We'll load this thing back to 130 gram. Load it back, load all the 20 gram masses. You will find that we have sorted all the 130 gram masses. So we are going to set this in a vertical oscillation. And with the help of my stopwatch, I'm going to time it for 10 complete oscillations. So, so in timing, I found out that at 130 grams, the time C1 is at 9.20 seconds. Well, I will take another, I will do it again, redo it. Then I, will, I got that the second time is 8.30. I'm going to take the average between 9.20 plus 8.3 divided by 2. That will give me this value here. And also, our period is the time all over the number of oscillations. So we'll have T over F, which is in this case 8.70 over 10 oscillations. We'll have a value of 0.87. And we'll square T, we'll have 0.76. Then at 110 grams, that means we are going to remove one of the 20 gram masses. When we remove one, this will be at 110. Then we'll set it up to vertical oscillation. And we record our time for 10 complete oscillations. Then Recording it, we'll find out that our time is 6.50, the second time is 6.40, then we'll take the average, we'll have 6.45, then we we'll divide by 10, we'll have 0 0.65, then we square it, we'll have 0 0.42. So I don't know how the question will be, but it might give you a mathematical expression to solve based on the parameters that you have gotten so far. So you find out that k, let's say k is equal to 39.5x over t1 squared minus t2 squared. So we have 39.5. Remember that our x was gotten to be 0 0.0102 meters, which is 39.5 multiplied by 0.012 divided by the value that we have for our t1 squared, 
which is 0 0.76 minus 0 0.42. When we divide this, we have 1.185 meter per second square. Why? Because our extension is in meters, while the time is in second square. So therefore, we have 1.185 meter per second square. So they might also ask you some other questions, like the, the, the precautions taken in this experiment. One of the precautions is that I avoided error due to parallax when taking readings on the meter wheel. Secondly, is I avoided conical oscillation of the mass of the weight slotted on the spring. I made sure it is set to vertical oscillation. Then also you might be asked, okay, states Hooke's law. Hooke's law states that the force of, a, of any of um, that the force is directly proportional to the extension, provided the elastic limit of the material is not exceeded. So, if you have not subscribed for my video on YouTube, please make sure you subscribe down below the button down and like my video. I will also be posting a lot of videos concerning our NACO practicals exam, so please stay tuned. Thank you so much for listening.